Put yourself in the shoes of poor little Dave. Dave just got a small slice of cake, much smaller than his friend John's. If you've ever been around children, you can guess what's coming next. A big fight over how unfair this distribution is. What's a parent to do? Don't worry, parents. My dissertation has some answers. John must be so selfish, right? Even though we may think of children as being selfish, they're actually really good at upholding rules and being fair. What happens when children are asked to distribute five erasers among two children? They would rather throw away an eraser than give more erasers to one child. Children also have a sophisticated understanding of different types of rules. Even four-year-old John knows that it is immoral to hit other people and that hitting others is much more of a serious offense than wearing pajamas to school. For the past six years, my doctoral work has looked at just this. We know that children deeply care about fairness, but we don't know how children think about unfairness as it compares to other types of rule violations. Is it worse for John to be unfair than for him to push somebody? Alternatively, is it worse for John to be unfair than to not listen to his teacher? How we conceptualize fairness as a moral or non-moral issue affects how we respond to it. For example, if we perceive unfairness to be similar to physically harming others, we may be more likely to intervene. However, if we perceive unfairness to be similar to wearing pajamas to school, we may still respond negatively to the violation, yet we may not act to rectify the harm done to the victim as much. So I asked, how do children's perceptions of fairness change over time? To answer these questions, I interviewed 66 four and six year olds. I asked them to evaluate the seriousness of different rule violations. Children saw pictures of other children behaving immorally by harming others, disobeying school rules, and taking more Play-Doh than other children. So what did I find? There was an important developmental shift in children's understanding of fairness. Four-year-olds were not sure how to think about fairness. In contrast, six-year-olds perceived fairness more as a moral rule. This is the first evidence that children may not start out thinking about fairness as moral. With these findings in mind, we can help parents reconsider how they talk about unfairness. Furthermore, we can design school curricula for specific developmental periods. This can help socialize and maintain fairness concerns from early in development. And we can hope that John will step up and share his cake with Dave.